It's getting to the point of being hokey to hear the phrase over and over, but it rings true. We as a nation are divided. Now, I don't necessarily mean divided in a sense that the citizens of the country are politically polarized in two factions that are on the brink of civil war. I mean that the people of this country, whether they know it or not, are fundamentally at war with the ruling class, which in my opinion is made up of elite corporate trusts, most of which reside in the Bay Area yet have no allegiance or regard to the country or its people. Powerful political figures that just happen to, more often than not, have international interests with a clear-cut agenda, and last but not least, as they are the subject of this video, the mainstream press that are more interested in broadcasting a narrative rather than news. What's at stake in this war is the truth. How the media is winning this war is manipulating the average person's perception of the truth. This can be achieved in various ways such as clever propaganda, lying by omission, and coordinated narratives. Now this has been happening for quite some time, but think about where we are in the timeline now. For four consecutive months, there was 92% negative coverage of the sitting U.S. president in the press. This is unprecedented given the ease of access to information as well as its overall reach due to the technological advances of our time. Pundits on TV have gone from Walter Cronkite-like reporters with a dry delivery of the news to moral arbiters that decide to relay what is and isn't culturally acceptable in our society. Did you catch that? In many cases, the news isn't being reported, but rather the people who should be giving you the facts are determining to you what is right and what is wrong. Now, as of the time of me putting this script together, we have had two major incidents within days of each other occur in the U.S. A series of bomb threats to major political figures and influencers and a shooting at a synagogue. I'm not going to make any definitive statements about these incidents. We don't know all the details, and I'm not fucking Sherlock Holmes. I do have my own opinions and suspicions. But I don't want to muddy the waters. The media is doing a perfectly good job of doing that themselves. I merely just want to point something out. So often, in the case of tragedies, the blame is put on people other than the actual perpetrators, or more specifically, their actions. Now, this isn't always the case. Sometimes, often to push an agenda, people cite laws or fundamental rights for allowing a tragedy to foment or take place. But let's focus on the scapegoats of people and the actions or words of people. I'm sure at least once you've heard something generally similar to the phrase, This is a symptom of Trump's America. Usually, this is a conclusion one would come to when they postulate that Trump is often spouting violent, inflammatory language, thus radicalizing his base. But this is a narrow-minded, extremely ideologically motivated perception of reality, and surprise, surprise, one that is often pushed by the media. Now, I'm not adverse to believing that words do have the power to influence people and people can indeed be motivated by rhetoric. In fact, I'm gonna put my thinking cap on and use that line of reasoning to interpret the situation and come up with a little hot take of my own. How about the violent and sensational rhetoric of the press? What if there's a trickle-down effect on the viewers of radical propaganda? Now just uh, bear with me here, but maybe when somebody at CNN calls a politically motivated violent mob morally justified, when you use your hands in a violent way, you are a rioter. And unless you're justified in defending yourself and you hit someone, you're a thug, you're a criminal. You attack cops, you slap the media, you're in the wrong, period. But I argue to you tonight, all punches are not equal morally. In the eyes of the law, yes. But in the eyes of good and evil, when someone comes to call out bigots, and it gets hot, even physical. Are they equally wrong as the bigot they are fighting? I argue no. Some people might believe it. The mob is motivated to further its agenda, and the political opposition is isolated or ostracized, often by the blind followers of the narrative of pundits. When the press puts pressure on censoring or outright deplatforming people from social media, 
these people have less places to go. Soon, these people, who may either be radical by the standards of today or vocal dissidents, are removed from the main stage of political discourse, so they end up finding their own soapboxes, which inevitably are at risk of becoming radical echo chambers. When the media is outright calling people alt-right, quote-unquote, sexist, racist, and demonizing them on their platforms, what do you think is the effect? How safe would you feel if many people in the world, possibly your own community, potentially views you as a hate-filled bigot, possibly a violent one? Now, not all of this falls on the press. I'm sure you could connect the dots to things of this nature to social media and social media users. It isn't just the press. But I can't tell you how disgusting it is to see these vultures with microphones have the fucking gall to run to a tragedy and stand on high as they tell the world who should be held responsible for a tragedy and who has blood on their hands with zero self-awareness, zero accountability. But hey, dead bodies make for good ratings. So anything to keep that going is all part of building a good business model, right? Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. Uh, uh, 